Good morning, back from the U.S., heading now to Tel Aviv to meet a woman named Jessica Piha, who was introduced to me via Rob Wolf, the guy who runs the at Microsoft account on Twitter and a director of marketing at Microsoft who introduced me to her. Pretty excited to meet her. He spoke very highly of her. After that, to Intelligo HQ to kind of sum up the trip and uh, talk about next steps. And then lunch with the CMO of IDT Corporation, Ben Hirsch, followed by a couple of other meetings, including a kickoff meeting with a company in New York called CareDocs that I've recently connected with. Very impressive company, talking marketing there. So all in all, pretty jam-packed, pretty exciting day. Here we go. Change of plans. I'm meeting Jessica in Petar Tikva by Intelligo. Here's Intelligo offices right here. And I figured, why not move our meeting to here instead of Tel Aviv so I don't have to worry about Tel Aviv traffic. So we're meeting here for an early morning coffee. Less pressure, less traffic. Better way to start the day. Now I'm waiting for her to arrive. Great meeting with Jessica. Super high energy. Say hello. Yo, what's up? Hi. I told you. <laughs> I just said you're super high energy. It's as if we, it's as if we planned that. That was fantastic. Rob, man, I love you. Great, in, great, great intro. Thank you for that. Now she's going to meet some top, top dogs in the VC space in Israel. What's your website? www.jvpmedia.com. And it was a pleasure, Hillel. Thank you. We had so many great things to say. Wait, and wait, wait. Hold on. I'm not here to plug me. I'm here to plug you. But hold great, on one second. Great juju. And I have to say, good energy and wait, great wait, juju. Wait, wait, wait. Let me just ask you a question. Why do people say www? I don't know. <laughs> I was just wondering. <laughs> no, it's not you. People always say that. I'm like, you know, if you don't write www. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> it was awesome still. to meet you. Let's go get you your get, and we're going to do it again soon. We'll do a real interview next Sounds time. Sounds good. Bye, nice everyone. Cheers. JVPmedia.com. Yes. Love it. It is not often that I'm in a meeting in which I am the low energy one. Holy heck, she is a serious powerhouse energy bomb. Very, very cool meeting. Rob Wolf, by the way, was on the vlog a couple of months ago. The guy's a legend, and uh, anybody he introduces me to clearly is going to be high caliber, but Jessica seems incredibly talented. Very happy I got a chance to meet her. She's only here for a couple of days. Off to Intelligo to sum up the insane trip that was last week. I'm usually on the right side of this because I like to see the screen, but for you, man, I love you, so I made an exception. Who are you? I'm uh, Ari Tuch, and I uh, run BizDev for Intelligo. What is Intelligo? Intelligo is... I'm testing you now. You know, oh, yeah? I'm testing you. I love tests. It's the best. Intelligo is an automated background check platform. Um, essentially, background checks in general are very manual, old-fashioned, 50 pages, long, boring. Mm -hmm. We do them fast. We do them sexy. Uh, extremely user-friendly. Um, and uh, the, the need in the industry is just unbelievable. Across the industry, whether it's... HR, you know, you're hiring someone, you need to do a background check, whether it's pre-investments, VCs need them, whether it's politics, who's coming in, you know, to our country. I mean, there's endless applications for background checks, and like Ari said, they're being done, you know, super old school. Give me, I mean, just some buzzwords in terms of the tech that's being used here. I mean, we got NLP, natural language processing, we got machine learning. Semantics analysis. Sem AI. I mean, we got, we got it all going on, and you can run an entire background check in a matter of an hour to a day instead of three weeks to a, like three months, basically. Um, and that was what we were doing in the US. We were meeting across verticals and the finance, that's what we're doing in New York, the financial space. Then we were in Washington, obviously, and then San Francisco, HR and, and, and VCs, et cetera. And that's you know, kind of what we set out to do on, on the three day trip that we were on, which was completely insane. But uh, in general, as I've said many times, when I come here, I think we're in like hyper pr productivity mode. I think what we get done in one hour, honestly, like think think about what we did in the last hour. Like it's completely nuts. But anyway, I'm going to Jen's now. I told I said I had to get him on camera, and I did. So that's good. He dragged me here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm kidding. I love put, it. Put a, put a gun to his head. All right. <laughs> Till next time, dude. Thanks. Have I mentioned how much I love Intelligo? Big fan. Big, big fan. Made it to Gems with one of my favorite people. Who are you? I'm Ben. You're a regular on the vlog. <laughs> I'm a regular. <laughs> people will get fed up with me. Ben Hirsch, as I said, a marketing <laughs> legend, CMO of IDT. I just want to tell you guys something. I've said this before, but I'll say it again. I'm a simple guy. Yeah, I could dream about Aston Martins. I could dream about... But one of my favorite vehicles on the road is this guy right here. I don't know why, but I love it. I love these cars. I don't know what, what it is about this car, but I love it. It's affordable. All I need is a Volvo. Look how beautiful that thing is. Anyway, let's go eat. I love gems. Woo! That's what I'm talking about! <laughs> on cue, 
on cue. I love it. Love it. Oh, love man. It. Nice to see you. Everything you're, you're starring my vlog, man, you know? Uh, good. Yeah, good. Doing the, the man himself. All right, that's it. <laughs> best schnitzel and top liver in this country, period. One of my absolute favorite places to eat, Gems Beer Factory, with one of my absolute favorite people. You know, I, I, called, you, I called you this morning on Facebook. I don't know if you saw my Facebook. You know, I do my morning pictures every morning. I said, I'm meeting a marketing legend. And you, you're probably, you know, knowing you, that might embarrass you and everything. But at the end of the day, I Makes mean... Makes me laugh. No, no, but Ben, <laughs> let's be honest here. I mean, you're, you're, you're CMO of IDT. I mean, this company, you know, you're... You guys are a beast. You're an absolute. Tell me, what is IDT? Okay, so I, I, IDT Telecom basically has got two divisions. We cater towards uh, immigrants, right. and we allow immigrants to call home and send money home, okay. and to keep them connected with their families abroad. And that's a very powerful thing. And and if you get into the spirit of that, you really feel like you're doing good. You're getting up. You're doing good. You're making people feel good. You, you're giving them the the tools to be close to their family back home and that's to like make one, their lives better. Isn't that one small part of IDT. Yeah, but IDT is a, is an ecosystem. So right. now once you've got the customers then that's called the retail division and then the retail division takes those minutes that are generated uh, and the wholesale division then resell them around the globe so it's actually quite a global perspective and it sells 30 billion minutes making IDT one of the top five international carriers and and all of that is really nice statistics etc etc but the organization its culture what it's trying to achieve it, it's such a wonderful place to work both because of the customers and what we're trying to achieve as an organization you do amazing things no yeah. Yeah, it's, it. it's really. By the way, in Israel too, you guys do amazing things. You give hundreds and hundreds of people jobs. It's, it's like great. Unreal. It's great. You've been there how long? Nearly eight years. Eight years. It's yeah. a lifetime. Eight years oh has my been. Lord. Uh, you know, it's nice. I, I've been challenged and excited. You've seen like a real transition in terms of telecommunication and, and telephony in general. I would imagine. Yes, uh, I, I started my career really, really early at British Telecom. Then I moved to Orange, and I had an amazing time selling all the value-added services that we've talked I about. Love when people walk by and see this monstrosity of a camera, like, what is happening? Is that CNN or something? Like, this is scary. Yeah, let me show you. People, people forget what this camera looks like. Let me show you what it looks like. It's like really scary. Look how scary that camera is. It's like a big mama camera. So everyone that walks out of a restaurant sees this thing on the table. They're like, what's going on here? Anyway, okay. So, you know, you're, you're there. You're running the entire marketing operation, which I would imagine. I can't even imagine. I can't actually even imagine what that's like. But that aside, you've kind of developed yourself a side passion. Let's call it that. Mm -hmm. And I, I can't remember the last time I saw someone as passionate about technology. I would say the last person I saw this passionate about technology was myself. Cool. Uh, uh -huh. And. And it's a very specific technology that I think most people would agree is the future. And I don't want to actually call it VR, AR. I think it's, I think it's the next generation of the way we are going to interface with our computers. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think we're going to live in a world where there is a real bridge between the digital world coming into the real world. I, I'm not a fan of people living in a false environment and spending their entire days and nights in a uh, virtual space. Right. I think that we're people, I think we need to mix, I think we need to uh, be excited about the worlds that we live in. But I do think that the internet and the digital environments have been an amazing addition to our lives. And when you merge those things together, which is gonna happen over the next few years, really that's amazing. I actually didn't, that's, you just, I think you, you, you're actually onto something. I don't, I've never even thought about it that way. Because think about today, right, the addiction to this thing, right? What do right. people say, like, get out of your phone and right. like, you're in the real world, right? right? Interact and, with and people. And today it's, th these things are mutually exclusive. Maybe that is exactly why a company like Magic Leap that's doing mixed reality is so powerful because using Magic Leap in, in its final version, it's not ready yet, I'll be wearing a pair of glasses and I'll be looking at the real world completely normally, yeah. but I'll also be looking at the digital world. Uh, absolutely, and we can make this prediction now because there's loads of people that I talk to and they say, oh, I'm not gonna wear glasses, I'm not gonna get, get I'm not gonna be a participant. What we can tell you right here, right now, you will be. Oh, there is what? absolutely yeah. no weather, if, but people are going to be immersed in a mixed environment and, and that's amazing you know what it's the same I always say it's the same people that said well, I don't want a TV in my house at the, when I was growing up I was like what's wrong with that person that have a TV in their house then it was you know why would I want a mobile phone I won't be right. in touch with me then it was like why would I go on Facebook then it was like why would I let people know my location why, privacy all these people like they're 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 fighting um, innovation and advancements in the world yeah. you can't fight that absolutely it's not it's not just the the technology it's the benefits 100%. right well said, so, well so, so the benefits associated with all of these things when, when we were had feature phones and people said oh I, I 
don't need anything other than voicemail. Well, no one even uses voicemail and anymore. So we used voice, we used text. Now those things are passe and yeah, we're all yeah. involved in new types of technologies, new types of benefits that those brings. When you combine that into the real world, life's gonna get better. Right. So and that's really cool. And that's something that both you and I are gonna be massive participants in. I hope so, future. I hope so. Two so things to say. Fun. Number one, it's funny you mentioned voicemail. Is that my first job, you know, a Converse was the company that invented voicemail, right. first of all. Second of all, last week, uh, in, last week, what day is it today? Today's Monday? Today's, Today's Monday, Monday, so it was last week. Uh, in Silicon Valley, I sat with Benedict Evans from Andreessen Horowitz, who's, well, I, I, I told him that he's one of the only people, he denied that, he said many people have seen Magic Leap, but I don't think that's true. That aside, the, he, he played and used Magic Leap, which is a company that raised two and a half billion dollars of capital from Amazon, Alibaba, Google Ventures, and Dreesen Horowitz, they don't even have a product yet and they're valued at six, seven billion dollars. So I think anybody with, anybody who says that it's like BS and vapor is, I'm sorry, pardon my French, is just an idiot because Amazon, and Alibaba, and Google Ventures don't invest in, in, in nothing. So the fact that these guys are investing means there's something to it. And he said to me like, you know, the, the technology is not yet ready for commercial use, it's too big, whatever it is, but the point is, if I'm able to look at a person in front of me, and while I'm looking at that person or the world, see an, an additional reality, the virtual reality, and see a character on the table while I'm looking at you, but it's literally mixed reality between, you know, the digital world that we live in, this thing, let's call it, and the real world, that is so powerful. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and that, I agree with you, is, so you were telling me that you were in New York and, you, and your sister, Sandy, who yeah. have to give, every time, every time I interview you, this is number three, this is <laughs> yeah. the third time I interview yeah. you, I have to give Sandy we have a shout shared out. Love. <laughs> yeah, I have to give Sandy a shout out. Sandy hired me for my first job in tech, and literally, I would say, a, in a, a monumental part of, of developing my career. So shout out to Sandy, uh, who now works at AllSeated.com. AllSeated. Very cool company. She, she brought you to, you told me to. Yeah, so they're, they're all seated are doing some amazing stuff in virtual reality. Let's plug it, let's plug uh, it. <laughs> and Sandy kept saying to me, you're a couple of years behind, you don't realize how amazing it is. And I would go, yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. In any case, she dragged me when we were both in uh, in Manhattan. And I was like a kid in the candy store. They dragged you where? You didn't say where? She, she dragged me to all the flagship stores, the Samsung, Microsoft, Google, some other electronic giants in Manhattan. We Ubered all, all the way around the city. Microsoft's nice, right? The it was amazing. Yeah. And I was a kid in a candy store and, and Sandy was videoing me and my, my family were watching and my wife was saying, don't let him buy everything. And my kids were going, buy everything. It, 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 was, it was such a unique experience of realizing where these technologies are now that what I thought was going to be 20 years time, you really realize in 10 years time, there will be no phones as we know them. There will be no screens, there will be no nothing. So when you were working for the, the biggest voicemail company, they're pretty much non-existent right yeah, now. Not pretty much. <laughs> non-existent. <laughs> I, I was working in, in Orange. The biggest phone company in the world by far was Nokia. There was a, an unimaginable world where there would be no Nokias. There's no Nokias, there's no voicemail company. There will be no phones in hey, 10 I, years I, I, time. I'm gonna push back on the no Nokias thing. They're making some new phones that are pretty cool, but that's a topic okay. for another time. But anyway. Um, the but, concept being, and, and so, so, and so where, where's this going? Anyone's got any great thoughts, etc. He's he's your man too. He's your man. I'm I just want to tell you one thing. I'll actually never forget the first time I tried Oculus. I was at a conference and there was like, a, you know, it was, it was way, way early and there was like a, a booth and they had the Oculus there and I, I sat down, put headphones on me and he put the Oculus on me and it was a roller coaster. Right. And I got up afterwards and I felt dizzy. Yeah, yeah. 100% real. Absolutely. And they're still, they're still working on some of that because you still feel sometimes a little bit odd when you come out. But I played some games in virtual reality it yeah, was wild. so outlandishly amazing and I used some of the more business perspective in the in, in the augmented reality headsets and you just realize that the world of business and the world of entertainment and the world of communication this are makes, about no the, sense. makes no sense this makes no sense I agree makes no uh, sense. Here, here's one one piece of uh, here's a sneak Obsolete. peek into something happening right now as I told you one of my absolute favorite favorite entrepreneurs in this country Shai Winnegar who's the founder of Fiverr and is now the founder of Lemonade reached out to me last night and said that he just got the Oculus Go and that I should come into the office to Lemonade HQ to play around with it. So Thursday morning, I believe at 9.30 a.m., hopefully be able to turn on the camera, I'm going to be playing with Shai Winnegar some VR on the new Oculus Go. So that's gonna be super exciting, very excited about that. And uh, listen, man, this was fantastic as always. Love hanging out. And by the way, I'll, I'll show you guys in the car. You, just, you really didn't have to do the whiskey thing. I mean, I appreciate it and, and it validates everything I believe, but you know that that's the last time you're ever getting me anything, I hope. Don't My do pleasure. That again. My but, pleasure. Uh, anyway, listen, bottom line is, you know, let's let's just be in touch and see how we could shape the future together. Love it, thanks, right, thanks again for lunch. Looking forward to next time, see always. You thanks, man.
I don't know very much about whiskey, so maybe you guys can tell me, but this is what he brought me. Super cool of him to do it, but um, I like my occasional whiskey, but absolutely not an authority on this stuff. All I know is that I cannot stand when it's smoky. I don't even know if that's what it's called, but anyway, Ben's awesome. I hope that was able to be communicated in our interview. I think this is literally the third or fourth time I'm interviewing him on the vlog. He's, he's, uh, he's a real deal. Now back to Beit Shemesh. You know, getting this whiskey from, from Ben made me think, and I said it to him, it kind of validates everything I believe about business, which is, you know, if you help someone in business, you do good for others, sooner or later, and it might take a month, it might take a year, it might take a decade, they want to do good back to you. I've been helping him with some stuff, just kind of brainstorm, and, you know, he's a friend, so I obviously didn't expect anything. He didn't, you know, just literally just brainstorming, but like, you know, he, he was traveling and he, he felt, for whatever reason, he felt, I have to buy hell or something. And you know, in this case, it manifested in whiskey. But, and that sounds funny, but in reality, when it comes to business, I, I always say it, I sound like a broken record, but if you facilitate success for others, you do good for others, whether that's a, a stupid intro to your uncle who invests in their company, or you know, an introduction to the press, or whatever, it, it doesn't really matter how small or big it is, but if you do good for others with zero expectations, it will come back, period, full stop. And again, it, this today manifested in whiskey, I'm not complaining, but, but I basically built my entire career on that, so. Just kind of a, a, maybe a little bit of a, a corny cliche lesson, but it really is true. That's all. Uh, today was a great day and um, tomorrow is going to be proof day. So I will see you then. Have a good one.